Hi guys, my name's Laura and I'm the Specky Seamstress. Welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do a little bit of a post-Christmas roundup. <laughs> so talking about some of the things I received, some of the things I bought, and just my general thoughts on the post-Christmas period. Aptly, I am still in my pyjamas because don't you spend as long in your pyjamas as you possibly can after Christmas. <laughs> um, I am in my Renan Wilson Attenborough top. Um, which isn't only pyjamas, but does get worn as pyjamas. And I'm in some beautiful pyjama bottoms that Jay from the Canton Stitch very very kindly <laughs> bought me. Got excited, talked too quick. Um, which I'm not going to try and show you through kind of waving my leg in the air, but <laughs> I will take a picture. Um, they're pyjamas that I admired of hers and she bought me a pair, which was incredibly lovely. I was hoping to say to you, I've got a new sewing chair and show you the new sewing chair because one of the chairs I rescued from Nick's grandparents house when they recently moved was a really beautiful chair with like a really deep seat, uh, proper upholstery kind of pins all the way around it in a really lovely yellow velvet, which I'm planning on reupholstering at some point. Um, not because the velvet needs it, but because the pad needs replacing. But the cat has adopted it as her own <laughs> she is at one with the chair and will not be removed from it so i did just go downstairs i've snapped a photo that i'm gonna pop in here because she has been there pretty much solid for the last four days to the point where at christmas dinner when we were all using all of the chairs she kept trying to get back in and was very disappointed that someone was on her new chair <laughs> so i think that was the cat's christmas present um but I am hoping to use that as my sewing chair, if I can claim it from <laughs> in the future. Um, I can't talk about Christmas without talking about the secret sewing swap. So for those of you who follow me on Instagram, at the Specky Seamstress, I was hosting, along with Gemma from Sewing in Pyjamas, a secret sewing swap. So it was a little bit like a secret Santa. You would be kind of allocated a person to buy or make a present for and send it to them. Now the official swap date for the Secret Sewing Swap is the 31st of December because we got started a little bit late on the organising this year and we wanted to leave the post a little bit of time just in case things got a little bit delayed, particularly international post. But along with a lot of other people I did open my present on Christmas Day. <laughs> sorry everybody <laughs> so i wanted to show you what i got which was so my present was from ruth ruth e walker on instagram and she runs a shop called ray of soap and she got me two beautiful things that are handmade by her from her shop so a handmade 100 percent cotton uh, knitted washcloth which i'm really excited to use and then also this really lovely orange and bergamot handmade soap and i wish i could share with you how amazing this smells because it's it's wonderful and i um i showed it to my mum and she was like straight on the website looking as to whether she could buy some i'll pop all of the details below um but the shop is called ray of soap i'll pop her website below but please do go check it out because she's got some really beautiful perfumes and yeah, I'm really excited to try this and I might pick up some more. And then she sent me a couple of little sewing bits and pieces as well, which is lovely. And on the theme of Secret Sewing Swap, I sort of bought myself a little present, which is not really secret <laughs> or a swap. But while I was shopping for a Secret Santa that I do at work, which is, I organise it and it's a charity shop secret centre. So the idea is, you know, we work within the sort of energy sustainability field and rather than introducing lots of new plastic waste into the world in the form of kind of novelty Christmas tat, <laughs> we go and we buy something from charity shops for each other and you can really get creative with it actually and find some really amazing things. And while I was shopping for my secret centre at work, um, I picked up one of my presents for my secret Santa or my secret sewing swap on the Instagram kind of online sewing community swap and <laughs> it was a pack of the Makery um, 
buttons. So it was, I, I've got the pins here, which is what I bought for myself. Now, my aunt bought me a set of these pins when I first started sewing last summer. Was it for my wedding, actually? I don't know. She bought me a set of these glass headed pins and I loved them. And I spotted this pack in the in the shop and in the charity shop and thought, oh, I'll, they're brand new. They're, they're unopened. I'll buy a pack for me. And underneath it was a pack of mixed buttons, which I bought for my sewing swap partner. Also, on the theme of Secret Santa, there's something else I have to show you. <laughs> I mentioned the Secret Santa at work, which was charity shop. My present from my Secret Santa was a sewing box with cats on it, which is kind of perfect, isn't it? It's got a little pincushion and pouch here, uh, which is really cool. It also came with a little book and some earrings. And yeah, that was quite a cool present. I haven't quite worked out what I'm going to put in here yet because I tend to every so often do a bit of a sort out of all the different kind of haberdashery bits and pieces that I put in my boxes and pouches and drawers and things and I feel like I need to do that at the minute and um, particularly as I have quite a lot of bra making supplies <laughs> that are jammed in with some zips and bits and pieces so I might make this my bra elastic box maybe um but yeah I was really quite pleased with that really kind of thoughtful present shall I talk to you about the presents that I got not from secret santas um there's a few <laughs> there's a few things to show you so as well as buying me these beautiful pajama bottoms jay from the camden stitch also got me this book which is a little bit intimidating <laughs> but very useful this is the complete guide to fitting and i really need this because i feel like this year or next year i really want to kind of embrace getting things a little bit more perfect uh don't worry my motto of it doesn't have to be perfect to be wearable will still stand but i would like to try and work on fitting this year now one thing that was quite cool about this just as i was looking i'm not going to be able to find it now for the exact quote but it said the good news is if your clothes fit you will look great and it's all about how it doesn't really matter what shape or size you are or what oddity <laughs> you have in your shape uh, you will look great if you can get clothes that fit you and that is why we learn to sew or that is why some of us learn to sew or that is partly why some of us <laughs> learn to sew so really really pleased with that so thank you very much Jay uh, that was very kind of you I'm looking forward to digging into this and trying to tackle some of my fit issues particularly around arm size so yeah excited by that on the theme of books not quite a present <laughs> My mum brought home this book, which they are throwing away from the school library. So they, is it from the school library? Yeah. So my mum works in a school library and uh, because they don't have a textile department in the school anymore, which is very sad, um, they're getting rid of quite a lot of their kind of textiles books that they kept in the library for, for students that needed it. And she picked me up this. Now she wants to keep this, but she thought I would like to have a look at it and maybe take some copies of things. And um, this is the complete fashion source book. And it's basically just models of people wearing different types of clothes from different eras. So for example, wedding wear from 1964. Or underwear and 90s from or nightwear from the 1980s and that's just really cool like I'm really gonna enjoy chasing some of these and then there's also at the back these kind of timelines of just line drawings of different shapes that were popular in different years and decades so I am quite looking forward to having a proper explore of that there's also a lot of information in here as well it isn't just pretty pictures although there are lots of pretty pictures but yeah I'm um this is going to be really fun to to have a look at and have as a bit of a reference as well they also include accessories and yes i'm going to going to enjoy looking at that so not really a present but something that arrived in my house over christmas <laughs> something else that arrived in my house over christmas but wasn't really a christmas present um was this spool spool thread display 
it's going to make a horrible noise um just a plastic thread display which i think i'm going to try and put on the wall somehow in the sewing room because all of my threads are in that drawer there which is really messy and <laughs> i'd quite like to put some on display this was from um my husband's aunt and yeah it was a very useful present try and close it really quietly <laughs> Um, Nick's aunt also bought me a couple of things for Christmas which was very kind she bought me this glasses case which has sewing things all over it and when I opened this on Christmas day I thought it was awesome and then when I looked at it later on in the evening on the back it says for your sewing and knitting glasses and it's from a company called which glasses are which which I thought was quite cool so they must do them with all different and of things on so that if you have different prescriptions for different activities that you um you have that in it now i don't use glasses cases very often i have a bit of a glasses display case for my glasses and then um because i wear them all the time i don't use glasses cases very often but i think i'm going to use this to put probably some of my little scissors in it came with a little pair of thread snips as well so i think i might keep it for that sort of thing i like these sorts of size tins and things for if i take things to sew elsewhere so if i go to a friend's house or a sewing day or something uh, because they're quite handy and they're all kind of safe and secure so that will get put to good use although not the use it was intended for but that's fine <laughs> also under my tree sewing related on christmas day were two presents from anna who is fuzzy baby seals on instagram but she's from you got me in stitches on youtube and she sent me some of this fabric which is kind of epic um farmyard animal um i'm not quite sure what i'm gonna make with it but it's pretty cool there's quite a bit of it so recommendations for what i can sew with that would be awesome it is uh i particularly like the scarecrows on it <laughs> and she all got also got me a cute little uh pouch with simon's cat cat on it which again will probably be used for some bits and pieces i'm thinking of keeping like my unusual threads in this you know like my sharing elastic and stuff like that that i can use so just to keep them separate so that i know where they are so thank you very much anna also under the tree was this absolutely beautiful little pincushion it's so cute little ceramic pincushion with a wall kind of center and this is from laura who is sewn and shown i talk about her a lot <laughs> And it was handmade in West Sussex by Fat Ten, who I couldn't find online, but I'm going to dig a little bit harder and see if I can find her online uh, so that I can link her below. But yeah, really cute. Handmade by, well, it doesn't say handmade by, the wool is from May, May the sheep. <laughs> but this is just really cute and I'm going to keep that up on my sewing desk. Not for these have been sitting here just behind me these are not sewn but they're handmade by my mother-in-law who made me and my husband our cats she hand felted these absolutely adorable little cats and she's made them particularly this one because i mean we have a black cat but we have a tortoiseshell cat and she's like copied the, her markings i'm going to pop in a couple of pictures for you of the cats to show you what they think of this present um, but these are really cute they've got little whiskers and everything they're really adorable and I'm not quite sure where we're going to put them yet because I do quite like the idea of putting a loop on them and hanging them on the tree but the tree will be going away quite soon so we'll have to find somewhere to display them um, but they're made around a ping pong ball and <laughs> yeah they're just really really adorable uh, I'm really lucky to be in two crafty families so my my mum and my aunt are crafty and arty and nick's mum and nick's aunt are crafty and arty and nick's grandma was a seamstress so i'm kind of really lucky to have that <laughs> all around the family for now i'm just gonna pop them up there so as i said not sewing at all but also under the tree and i thought you might be interested <laughs> my husband bought me some beautiful shoes from Bowdoin now we talked a little while ago about shoes and I was surprised how many of you were really forthcoming with ideas and kind of sharing your pain in or sharing my pain in finding shoes that worked with your me made garments now these shoes are just perfect 
because they are basically a really sensible shoe that I can wear to work. They are reasonably flat, but the, the nice block heel is nicer than kind of a little skinny heel for me. Um, they are round, they are sensible, but they are a little bit different because of the colour blocking and they can be worn with jeans, they can be worn with smart trousers, they can be worn with dresses or skirts. So happy with these. The last thing I have to show you from kind of Christmas is actually something that I got my husband, but I went to Lush to buy some things for Nick for Christmas and I came across their fabric knot wraps which I hadn't really kind of come across before and I found one that I thought Nick would like which has all of these orangutans over it so a few years ago me and Nick went to Borneo and we went and saw the orangutans and Nick's very into his wildlife and we have a really big cushion like a 20 inch cushion cover with hand painted orangutans on that we got while we were there and I just thought this would be really cool to either turn into another big cushion or to just display on the wall. Now it is as bright as it's coming across, it is pretty luminous so whether it goes on the wall in our bedroom or in a living room is probably a debate to be had. Um, but I thought it would be really cool and it also made me realise how cool these were. Um, there's so many designs of them and I've actually ordered a couple <laughs> on eBay but I might pop into the store and see if they've got a couple of designs that I've seen that I like. Um, to make clothes with because these are made from recycled plastic bottles they're not horrendously expensive and um, they're four or five pounds for a square this one is 70 centimeters by 70 centimeters I can cut the Riley collection top front piece from one of these this one is safe though this one is Nick's um, or a Misty Cami top front so I've bought a couple on eBay from older designs to, to try and play around with making some things out of because they're really unusual, quirky designs. So quite excited by that. And Nick liked it too, as well as the content, which is good. <laughs> they also inspired me to go and wrap all of my presents in fabric. So this year we wrapped all of our presents in fabric scraps from my scrap bags and that went down really well as well. Everyone thought it was a really good idea and are now wanting to raid my scrap bag for next year, which is fine. And I've rescued all of the scraps to use again in dressmaking or present wrapping in the future. So was really happy with that. Didn't buy any wrapping paper this year at all. The only other thing I was going to talk to you about was the sales and whether I'm planning on buying anything or have already bought anything in the sales. I don't need any more fabric if I'm really honest with myself <laughs> but the sales are always quite tempting to have a look at aren't they um I nearly pulled the plug on some pulled the plug pulled the trigger yeah I nearly pulled the trigger on some plain like solid color ponty from girl charlie because girl charlie are doing half price on everything in their shop so it ended up their ponty which is a nice quality it was five pounds a meter but I didn't get there quick enough and all the colours I wanted have sold out, which is fine. Um, the only things I have picked up is from Lamazi Fabrics. Lamazi Fabrics are doing 25% off everything. I think until yesterday, I think it might have stopped now. Sorry. <laughs> and there's a fantasy lawn, like an embroidered cotton lawn that I've been eyeing up for ages on their website that I decided to kind of take the take the plunge and buy a meter of that to make myself a chilo top and also uh, the same for some atelier brunette stardust so the little embroidered gold circles in just a cream to make a really lovely classy grown-up basic top because I said I wanted some atelier brunette fabric and I just decided to take the plunge and treat myself <laughs> I think I will pop to Liberty and have a look at their sale at some point in the new year. They had an amazing sale last year and I went to their store and oh, I could have bought loads. They have like big remnant boxes of of kind of one, two, three, four metre pieces. But at the time, I'd not really been sewing very long and I didn't have many patterns that I was really comfortable with. And I was a bit nervous about about buying fabrics that were that expensive even though they were great value for liberty i just they, they were more expensive than i wanted to pay at the time 
So I'm going to go and have a look at that probably with the barn from getting a stitch because we'll go and see if we could split any of the kind of bigger remnant pieces because there was quite a few like three or four meters for 35, 40 pounds. And if we wanted to split that, that would be really good value. So I'm going to go and have a look at Liberty and I'm also going to go and check out John Lewis because last year they had some absolutely bargain um, so fabrics in their sale. So I will have a look at that. But otherwise, I'm going to try and be reasonably sensible and just have a bit of a look and see what comes up. I think that's all I have to say to you today. I am going to be filming the um, sum up vlog or uh, vlogmas for So This Is Vlogmas tour, which I hope you guys loved as much as I did. I just really want to do the summary justice. So I've got a few notes and stats to work out and take before I film my summary vlog. I'd love to know what you guys got for Christmas. Did you get any sewing things or crafty things? Anything new to try? I bought my mum a crochet your own necklace kit. I know my mum's really good at crochet, so it's not going to teach her anything new. But I thought it was just a little bit different and quirky. And it came with thread that was coated in like real silver, which is kind of cool. Uh, and I, I mean, I wonder if anyone else has got those kind of do do it yourself kits for christmas i would love to hear what you've got and how you spent your holidays but other than that until next time i will speak to you soon bye